Hello and welcome to another Trimble training video here. In this section we're going to be talking specifically precast and custom components and uh, the custom component part in particular. Basically what we're going to do is a continuation of the basic free online training and we're going to use that same model and we're going to be talking about parts. Okay, let's jump in the model here. Let's click on the view ribbon and go to near view, basic view. Let's make sure that our coordinate is set to negative two to make sure that's where our view is about. Control P to go to ISO view. We're gonna double click in the background. We're gonna rename the view here. By renaming this, this basically saves it away within our view list. We'll call this plan at elevation negative two. Change the view depth up to five feet and down to uh, five feet as well. That'll control what we actually see. And then we're gonna load in a visible object group called precast no T's that will remove all the T's. Press modify okay. You'll see that all the T's are gone and our view depth has changed. By pressing Control 2 and Shift 2 on your keyboard, you can change the transparency of the objects. The next step here is we need to actually model the one inch thick base plate at the column base. So these next steps will take us through how to do just that. On the top, select your uh, steel ribbon and go down to the plate. We're gonna create a contour plate here on one of our columns on grid F and 1. If you open up the gear icon over there, you'll see this is where all of our properties are located. We're going to load in the precast embed setting. We're going to change it to a one inch thick plate. And we're going to change the name to BP1 for base plate one. Press uh, control P on your keyboard. That'll bring it up to this plan view here and zoom into grid F1. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to trace the extents of the column here. So clicking all of the corners and then middle mousing right click and interrupt and we're going to rotate this view around just slightly and then we'll see our base plate that was dropped in at that negative two elevation okay i'm going to pause the video here for just a second to kind of explain what we're going to do next so this next part can get a little bit tricky and basically what we're going to do is we're just going to grab the bottom two handles of this base plate uh, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to push it up in, inside the column to make kind of an inverted base plate but to do so can be just a little bit tricky so what we're going to actually do is while holding alt you're going to click and drag a window from left to right it's very important it's from left to right that that window is going to have to you know capture those two bottom pick points um, if you go right to left you're going to grab everything um, and if you if you aren't holding down the alt you'll notice that you're not going to be able to grab the pick point so it's very important that you're holding alt and you draw a window from left to right just over those two pick points by doing a left to right uh, window we can select the bottom two handles and we're going to move them in the positive y direction eight inches to kind of create that inverted base plate you can cancel out of that and control p to go back to the plan view now if you zoom back in here basically what we're going to do is we need to drop on our dbas that are extending up into the column so to do so we're going to come up to the concrete tab and go to the rebar and click the single bar and basically uh, what we're going to do is we're going to model in one bar so for embedded bars these are basically our, our DBAs that are going to extend up into the piece we're going to change the size from number four bars to number five bars and now what you guys can do is you can always refer to the bottom left of the screen Tecla is going to walk you through the steps that you need to do to, to kind of proceed so right now it says pick the part to reinforce we're going to click the plate pick the shape of the bar we're going to click on the top left uh, end point there and we're going to hold our cursor upward in the Z direction and press R that brings up this dialog we can type in 0 0 4 feet it's basically X Y and Z up in the Z now it's telling us to pick the polygon position. So we're going to click this bottom node, and then we're going to click the top node of the base plate. Now you'll notice the bar will automatically drop in. You can right-click interrupt. So you see that we basically have one uh, rebar here that's not in the right location. It's it's you know kind of sunk into the plate. So we need to move this. So while the bar is selected, right-click, move special linear, and we're going to move this bar in the X, Y, and Z direction. So eight inches in the X. We're going to do negative two and three quarters in the Y and then in the Z we're going to move it up one inch just click move you will see you'll see that the bar has moved up and now it's in the correct location and for it to be you know, physically constructed 
right click interrupt control P to go back to your plan view and now let's zoom in on this bar with the bar selected right click and copy click the center of the bar hold your course cursor towards grid F and type in 8 inches you'll notice that bar once you click OK will pop in now you have two of your bars uh, for your DBAs for your base plate select them both while holding control right click copy special rotate now basically what we're going to do is we're going to rotate about this intersection click the intersection of F and 1 on uh, F, grids F and 1 we're going to make three copies. We're going to make three copies every 90 degrees, which is going to place in the other DBAs. Press copy there, and you'll see that all of the DBAs are now inserted. You can right-click interrupt to end the command. You can close out of this copy rotate dialog box. Make sure you guys are frequently saving the model. It's definitely a good practice to get into. Now we're going to um, create some of the holes in the plates. We're going to go to the steel tab bolt, create bolts, and from the drop down up here we're gonna load in just a hole so for for these inverted base plates you need a hole in the base plate so that you can connect down into the foundation so that's basically what we're gonna do here we're gonna change the size of the bolt uh, or size of the hole sorry to one inch diameter and over here under dialog properties you can set some of these uh, X and Y distances this is basically the distance between your studs and X orientation and distance between your Y orientation. And then down here we can change the, the offset. So basically depending on how we select and how we insert these, it's gonna offset them appropriately to be exactly where we want them to be. So to start off, it says pick part to bolt to. We're gonna select our base plate. Pick first position, so we're gonna click the midpoint there the top midpoint right there and we're gonna go over now says so pick second position we're gonna click directly over in the X axis that midpoint on the other side and you'll notice that the four holes are now in there you can save the model again now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all these items and turn them into one part so while holding control click on all of your elements your base plate click on your holes and click on all of your DBAs you should have 10 items selected then over here on the side, we're going to come to our component catalog, our applications and components. Click on the three horizontal lines there and define custom component. So this brings up the custom component wizard. And since this, this, uh, this topic is on part, we're going to change the type to a part. And we're going to name it BP1. This is the name of your custom component, so you can find it in the dialog box. You can enter it in a description if you'd like to. Now it says in, uh, in the model select all the objects that will form the custom component. Since they're already all selected, you can just press next. Now part position, this is very important for how you want to enter this in the model. You can enter it from either one, one point or you can do two points, however you want. So for this case, since it's kind of offset, we're gonna do two points. We're gonna do the center and we're gonna do down to the midpoint here on the Y axis and then click finish. Now as we select this item, you'll notice now it's all one piece. And if we double click on it, it brings up this little component dialog box. Since we haven't set anything up here, this is just kind of the standard out of the box. But just note that in this location here, you can customize it to change a whole bunch of settings, profiles, anything like that. Over here on your component catalog, you'll see that now you have this orange box for BP1. That's how you insert your component. Now you click on it single click once, which we've done just now. Now I can click on my intersection and down and it pops in intersection down pops in and it's very important that that direction that we set up that you follow that for how you insert it if you if you selected points out of order or um, kind of in the wrong axes then your plate may show up either flipped around or in the wrong plane or something like that so it's very important that you just kind of follow those uh, follow how you set that up We'll just continue on here, dropping these in. Right click interrupt and save the model. Thank you and that's going to conclude our presentation today on the part custom component. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you.